tell a biologically plausible just so story. Everyone likes a good story and scientists are no different. The key to good science is the ability to tell a good story. Storytelling has a long history in science and the important part is that the story gets the details right. Many people have told stories about evolution for centuries. There was one such storyteller, Rudyard Kipling, who wrote stories like how the elephant got its trunk, how the camel got its hump, how the leopard got its spots. However, while these are great, entertaining, well-written stories, they are not biologically plausible because in those stories, individuals evolve. And in evolution, populations evolve. Therefore, it's important when telling a story that it's biologically plausible. The idea behind this video and a objective in biodiversity is to teach you to tell biologically plausible just so stories. Interestingly, I happened to find an example of just this type of nursery rhyme on NPR the other day. Take a listen. Five violet spiders on a purple tree. Some were dark and hard to see. A birdie ate the lightest for her morning tea. Poor little spiders on that purple tree. Four violet spiders on a purple tree. Some were dark and hard to see. A birdie ate the lightest for his morning tea. Poor little spiders on that purple tree. And it goes on and on. Two violet spiders on a purple tree. Both were dark and hard to see. They had lots of babies in their family. And just like their parents, they were hard to see. had babies more successfully now they need not fear becoming treats for tea unless the birds get spectacles to help them see ask yourself these four questions number one what is the adaptation in the story number two how does that adaptation confer fitness number three what is the force behind natural selection and number four, what actually evolves? I hope you enjoyed listening to Five Violet Spiders. It provides a great example of a biologically plausible just so story. Now, let's break it down into the questions that I ask you. Number one, what is the adaptation? The adaptation in this story is the violet color. You might ask yourself, what is different between a trait and an adaptation? A trait would be any kind of color, pink, purple spiders, However, violet spiders in this case provide an adaptation because they blend in to the violet tree. So adaptations are traits that confer fitness to individuals. Question two, what is fitness? Fitness is the ability to survive and pass on the traits. And so as you heard in the story, the violet spiders that were able to blend in the tree were able to survive, reproduce, and produce more little violet spiders. Question three, what is the force of natural selection? Natural selection is the differential survival and reproduction of individuals that carry traits. And so the force of natural selection that allows for differential survival in this story is predation. All right, it's the little bird eating the different spiders that are not quite the right violet color. Question four, I ask you what actually evolved. Answer in this case is the proportion of violet color. All right, so violet color is a trait right, that has a genetic basis. And so we see a change in the proportion of violet colored spiders in the population. When you have a change in allele frequencies or genes in a population over time, you have evolution. And so in this case, the 
proportion of the population that is violet colored has evolved. And that is the trait that is important. I know that you've already read Jensen et al. That's Jensen and many others, 2007. And Jensen et al. wrote a paper about how to teach students to tell biologically plausible just so stories. In particular, Jensen et al. talks about how cheetahs evolved to run faster. The important component of Jensen is to emphasize that good stories include the four components that Darwin made famous. For biodiversity, I want you to be able to create a biologically plausible just so story for any organism we encounter. I encourage you to practice using the words individual, population, adaptation, fitness, natural selection, and evolution in a story format. Do you need one more example of how to tell a biologically plausible just so story? Well, I'll give you one. I'm Prof Romy and I study apple snails. These are apple snails, and just imagine that this population of apple snails lives in a pond. And I'm going to tell you a story about how the apple snail closed its door. What is the door of an apple snail? Well, it's this. It's technically called an operculum, but we'll call it a door for the purposes of storytelling. So imagine those snails in a pond, in a shallow pond. All right, And you have these number of snails that live in a shallow pond. That is a population. Now, there are individuals that have a door right, that fits really well. You can see this one doesn't quite fit. right? There's little parts, but there are snails that have doors that fit really well. And when snails are frightened, all right, or they need to take a nap, they close that door really tightly. So imagine that as water receded, as the pond got drier and drier, there were some snails Right? They were able to close their doors tighter than others. These snails with tight doors were able to survive and reproduce. An apple snail on average lays about 2,000 eggs. Those that died don't lay any eggs. So you see you have differential survival and reproduction. Snails that have tight opercula, that's the name for the door, are able to survive and reproduce where others die out. Over time, you see evolution of this trait for very tight doors where they can withstand the effects of drought, which are very common in the places that they live. In preparation for class, here is your homework assignment. I would like you to create a biologically plausible just so story on a newly discovered species. Feel free to be creative and fun. However, make sure that you properly use the terms individual, population, adaptation, fitness, natural selection, and evolution.